Hi Greg, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for AskAGM.com and I'll be looking at your game today. So let's start. After the moves e4, c5, knight f3, you play my beloved hyper accelerated dragon move order g6. And here, after the move c3, you play very unnatural move if you want to play g6. On move 2, you now play the move knight c6, which is already a slight inaccuracy. And I'll explain to you why. First of all, if white plays this move d4, after pawn takes, pawn takes, our typical reaction is to strike in the center with d5. The problem though is after pawn takes d5, we don't really want to take with the queen. The queen is going to get attacked and you're going to have to lose another tempo retreating the queen either all the way back or possibly to a5. So Unfortunately, you cannot recapture this pawn with the knight because this guy is under attack and knight before would be losing the piece. Queen a4 check and you lose the knight. So that's why this is incorrect move order and the correct move is simply to play g6 and after d4 takes takes d5. If white takes on d5, you, you play knight f6. You're going to recapture that pawn with the knight and black gets very easy and comfortable play against white's central isolated pawn, the d4 pawn. The second reason why I don't like the move knight c6 is because the whole point why we play g2, g6 rather, on move 2 is to avoid the so-called Rosalimo variation, which is a very big chapter in its own right. This is the move bishop b5. Well, guess what? You actually allow this, and this is what happened in the game. After you remove knight c6, bishop b5, you now have to play this variation that we try to avoid. So now after bishop g7, this is a standard Rosalimo. White is trying to break open the center. I actually don't like the surrendering the bishop that early, but it's playable. And knight f6, correct reaction, d5, bishop back, white plays h3 to try to stop either bishop g4 or knight g4, castle, and you manage to still get a decent position. I don't think white played ambitious enough to cause any problems. So e5 was logical way to try to ruin your pawn structure. Pawn takes, knight takes, bishop f5, excellent idea, trying to activate the bishop. c4, this is a standard idea. White is trying to build this beautiful pawn chain, eventually maybe b3, bishop b2, you now found the best plan. I really like this move. In this type of position, the key is to open up this bishop and to transfer the knight to d6. And this is done via the beautiful maneuver knight e4 and knight d6. Notice that you don't want to trade on d2 because the knight is actually blocking the bishop. So black is completely fine. So even though you made a few inaccuracies in the opening, with the move knight c6, you actually got a great position in the middle game. However, I feel like now you kind of lost the thread of the game and you started to drift by making a few inaccuracies again. I think after b3, queen c7 is fine, knight f3, and now you sort of play this move knight e4. This is a pseudo active move, right? You kind of put pressure on this knight, I think that was your idea, but in reality, with a simple move bishop f4, you realize that, oops, the queen is poorly placed, white is threatening a very nice discovered attack, knight takes g6, black is about to lose material, and you go back, admitting your mistake, and after his next move, queen d2, you basically gave white two free moves. If we go back to this position, right now, if you were to say pass twice, White is going to play this move bishop f4, queen d2 in chess. This is called giving up two tempi, which is usually not a good idea. So instead, I like the idea to strike white in the center. The bishops love open game. Here is pressure on the e and d files. And I like this move rook f e8, bishop f4 and rook d8. And if he plays the same ideas in the game, queen d2 going to strike the center with the move e6. And if pawn takes, for instance, bishop takes, only black can be better in the result of the middle game. Even though we have full symmetry, pawn-wise, you actually do have the bishop pair. 
position is a little bit more open for the bishops and the queen is poorly placed being x-rayed by that rook on d8. I think only black could be better. So now with your sort of giving him two free moves, you are now clearly worse and he executes the very standard idea of bishop h6 trying to trade the bishop. You play knight e4 and here white makes a pretty serious mistake. He plays queen e3 allowing you to simplify the game into roughly equal endgame. I do think that after the move queen f4, you're facing some serious issues. Obviously taken is only going to help his attack. Queen takes, followed by possible rook takes knight, bishop takes knight g5. It's a mate in that. And if you make some other move, I don't know, for instance, uh, knight back, then knight takes g6 is another problematic idea. Actually, I think the right way is first to take on g7 and then play knight take g6. Queen is hanging. You don't have time to take the knight. And this end game, you're simply down a pawn. White is much better. So after his move queen e3, you're back in the game. And good job for finding this simplification idea. Takes, 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 f3. He uses the pin to win the piece back. But now you found a brilliant idea. Bishop sacrifice, bishop takes h3. It turns out that if he takes with the pawn, queen g3 check is going to give you excellent win in position. And if king h1, the knight f2 is, he has to give up a queen, otherwise it's checkmate. So he cannot both win the bishop and the knight at the same time. He decides to take the knight. And this is the end game that I mentioned, which is absolutely fine for black. So the position is roughly equal. So let's go to the key moment. I think both of you are playing decent chess here. And now I feel like we're getting to another critical moment in the game. This is a good idea, by the way. He plays rook here. And now I really love your move. A lot of low rated players will play the move rook to a8 here. That's the move I absolutely don't like. This rook on a8 is totally useless. In chess, especially in the end game, you have to activate your pieces. Rook b8 is excellent move. He took the pawn. And now you're one move away from really getting an excellent attack. I feel like black has very good winning chances. You actually played a little bit passive move rook b1, going for massive trades and eventually equality. But after the move rook h8, only black can play for win. For instance, if he gets greedy and tries to go after the pawn, rook b2, I love this rook on the second rank. I call it the Pac-Man rook. And I feel like white is getting in trouble. If he takes, you can play bishop e4. And there is no stop in rook h1 checkmate. Activity, activity, activity. This is what separates strong endgame players for greedy, low-rated players. So I hope you learned this lesson. Because after rook b1, the game peters down to equality. You actually correctly simplify to opposite color bishop endgame. Yep, white is up a pawn, but he has absolutely no winning chances. As a matter of fact, even if you lose the g pawn and give up the bishop for the d pawn, if you can bring the king into the corner, it's still a dead draw because of the fortress. A8 square is light square and the bishop is dark square. So good job easily drawing this position. So a couple of things for the future. Move order in the opening is very important. In the middle game, don't, you know, try to be careful. Don't waste tempi, right? Try to activate your pieces. In, in the end game, you miss the great opportunity to try to create made in that with two rooks and the bishop. I hope you enjoyed this game and good luck in the future. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for AskGM.com.